Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Hi, I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk about sea-aged wines. Have you ever had wines aged in the sea before? Have you? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about your first experience when, when we first had a sea-aged wine, actually? Uh, actually, prior to our wine career, we had our first sea-aged wine. I think that was... Maybe in 2014? Yeah. Yep, so we were at a Spanish restaurant and the famous winemaker Raul Perez was in Singapore. Uh, we didn't really know much about him back then as well. <laughs> he turned up uh, for the wine dinner and he opened a bottle of um, one of his most famous wines. It's called Sketch, made from Albarino and then H in the Sea. So again, that was like, you know, they just told us, like, oh, it's H in the C. We didn't even care about that sort of information back then. We're just like, oh yeah, give us the wine. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out that the wine was really good. It really caught our attention. It's got this very beautiful salinity, um, yet it was still really balanced by what we consider, you know, the mineral flavor and the fruit flavor. So that was our first encounter with CH wine. And then we came to Croatia. Well, you know, it's been in the in the recent years it's been trendy all over the world to especially the Mediterranean to age the wine under the sea. The sea's an anaerobic environment. It's dark, mm -hmm. it's constant temperature, constant pressure. So the wines are said to evolve at a at a constant pace, I guess so to speak. And we actually have bumped into a guy who actually has an underwater cellar here in Croatia, uh, Marko Dusevic mm -hmm. from Adriatic Shell. Mm -hmm. And we visited we visited the underwater underwater winery several times. I've actually dove there. We've pulled we've pulled the bottles out of the sea. We've tasted bottles of the same vintage, the same year, aged in the sea versus the sea. You want to talk about the project, some of the observations you've seen? Sure. I mean, for what it's worth, um, we didn't just taste the wine from Marco as well. We also tasted wines um, made from Italian producers, a couple of sparkling wines. And even in some of the big chateaus in, in France and Bordeaux, they are actually aging wine underwater. Uh, back to the coral wine project by our friend Marco in Croatia. Uh, we did very interesting, extensive comparison ta uh, tasting with him before. One wine that stood out in particular for me was a Pinot Noir made in Slavonia and Croatia. And I think, I think that was a really good example because, you know, Pinot Noir is a very delicate wine, very fickle, fickle in the vineyard and also very fickle in the cellar. <laughs> so. So we tasted it, uh, we know that wine very well, and then we tasted one that was aged in the sea, and the one aged in the sea was significantly more developed. Uh, a little bit more tertiary note, but it gained this amazing silky palette that you want in Pinot Noir. So that was the best example that I've had. But also, of course, we, we've, we've also tasted a couple of examples like certain white wines and rosés losing its finesse, losing the, the, vibrant, uh, the vibrancy of the wine. But that's it, all of these things, um, Mako is still undergoing kind of like an experimental phase. So those wines that we tasted, not all of them, in fact, most of them, they are not available on the market. They're just kind of, uh, you know, a group of friends and professionals coming together to discuss like what wine work and what wine doesn't work in the sea. So you believe in it? I believe in it, but I think a lot more studies need to go into it to figure out what works and, you know, what is the, the real impact of it. I don't think aging wine in the cellar is considered a part of winemaking, but if it makes the process of aging faster, why not? Not all of us are have like 30 years to wait for one to be ready you know uh, you know i from what i've tasted a lot of people are skeptical from what i've seen the wines become a little bit more concentrated i actually don't know i'm a chemistry major but i still couldn't figure out actually what the chemist the chemistry is behind that i just know that some wines develop well some wines don't we're going to taste through three today these are experimental wines uh yeah you want to give these a go Absolutely, please. Oh, yeah, okay, we know the, the first one we taste is a wine we know really well. This is an, an experiment. It's Nikolaiov in Austria, mm -hmm. one of the first biodynamic dynamic mm -hmm. producers, very good producer, yeah. one of the first Austrian wines to get 100 points from the wine advocate Robert Parker. This is the 2014 yeah. Steinerhund Riesling. Uh, 
I really, 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 really like this wine. You can see the cool patterns that emerge when the water is. Keep talking while I'm tasting. Okay, <laughs> while the wine is while the wine is aged in the uh, Adriatic Sea, uh, it's it's only dropped down about 15, 20 meters. I actually dove down recently a few weeks ago. Went down, saw it. Pretty impressive. Pretty darn cool. I love this wine. Uh, Marco wasn't happy with how it was developing. Let's give this a go. What do you think so far? It would be nice to have the original wine side by side, but knowing the house style and all that, right? Um, Nikolai Hof wine is more about tension in the mouth. That just amazing balance of acidity and gentle flavors. And I do find that this wine is a little bit more developed. It has more pronounced like body and, and flavors, mm. but it's still a really good wine. That's the thing. It's really good. You know, I would like to take, we've done experiments where we taste the same wine, not just age in the sea versus age in the sea. This wine is a ridiculously good wine. I mean, huge scores. I think mm. this vintage is 96 points on Venice. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, when I'm tasting it now, I actually feel like uh, I want a little more fruit. I think it's got plenty of fruit. You do? I, think, I feel like I want this tension from the acidity, tingling sensation that I usually get from Nikolai. Wine's very good, but though. It's a good wine. It's very good. Thing. It's a good wine. I just don't know how it would, uh, how, you know, the sea versus the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing it does, it, it does, it is quite saline. Yeah, on the finish, it is a little bit, yeah, has a little bit of salinity. So this one's hard to compare. First of all, it's really, really delicious wine in the first place. Uh, I mean, I would have it somewhere in like the 93 point range, 92 point range. I think it's a really mm -hmm. excellent wine. Uh, the jury's still out. I wonder yeah. if this one works. Yeah. See, Mark wasn't so. Uh, so confident in Nikolaos wines aging in the sea, but we'll have to see, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is that some people really just like the mineral and that's, you know, salty flavor. We've got friends, we've got, we have a couple of friends who really just want white wines like that. And I think there are people who would actually prefer the CH style than the, the fresher cellar style. <laughs> well, let's move on here. So, uh, jury's out on that one. The next one we have the... Uh, Testament Babich, an actual Croatian wine, 2017. This was aged for, I believe, 270 days in the sea. We just tasted this wine non-aged uh, in a big tasting last week. So it would be interesting to see how this is aged under the sea. I have to give you a little preface. I actually do not like, I really usually do not enjoy this wine. I want to see what you think after we age it in the sea. Babich is a native grape to Croatia. Some believe it's the red grape with the highest potential, but there's just not a lot of it made in terms of varietal form, although it's growing every single year. It's a lot, a lot, a lot better. Really? Are you joking? Or I'm not soon? joking. Just the, smell it. Just it's... smell it first. Okay. It smells like, okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it smells like freshly tilted soy. And then with like cranberry cherry notes. You know this... But taste it. You know this wine, when I taste it regular, I've tasted it several times, uh, not aged under the sea. It actually, it tastes burnt up front on the nose like just burnt fruit and then there's just kind of nothing on the palate the palate's really thin this smells really good dark cherry kind of rose petal mm -hmm. mineral crushed rock type deal <laughs> this is a good wine really this is great and it's got it has wow a lot of intensity on the body on the, on the palate wow no, I'm serious. Mm. I actually was expecting to crush this on the show, actually. Uh, it's so round. It's concentrated, made it round. The tan, the tannins can be harsh on this kind, this wine, but it's really quite round, refined. Mm. It's something that a lot of people are going to like, but you know what? It's not, it's not just silky and round and, and, and soft. It mm. has some tannins. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what I like also, right, is the nose is really interesting and complex. And the Dalmatian Mediterranean characteristic still shows. The the finish still tastes a little bit raisin, only on the finish. So you have a lot of freshness, fruitiness, everything up front. And then it finishes like typical Mediterranean wine. I'm going to be seriously, because I've scored this wine, I don't even write about because I haven't. <laughs> non aged in the sea, seriously, I have it like in the low 80s. This, I would even consider it being almost kind of like 89, 90 point type I'll range. Oh, we'll strip for 90, seriously. Th wow. Yeah. Wow. This, this really has like sort of like a sense of place. 
characteristic of Bobbage. Yeah. I'm really. Sh- I, I, I I seriously was. Do you find it salty? I don't find yeah. it salty. Uh, I don't find it salty, but, yeah. but I find it more concentrated. And, like, and yeah. I was ready to kill this wine. So uh, let's move on. I'm really shocked here. Wow. 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 Okay. Let's move on. We have another wine that we actually, this is cool. Look at, look at, look at how the muscles has developed. <laughs> this, this is uh, the Yosic Cuvée Superior, aged, this is an experimental wine also, aged in the sea for one whole year. It's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Syrah, barrel aged from Baranja in Slavonia, right on the border of Hungary and Croatia. We did taste this wine already, aged in the sea, not aged in the sea. We've even done a video on this wine, not aged in the sea. We liked it so much that Shireen asked, Marco, if we could please have a, bo- a bottle of it. What do you think? Uh, exactly as how I remember it, um, the nose is still Whoa. the nose is still pretty much in its original state. It's quite a bit of an oaky wine. When I first tasted it uh, a year ago, I thought it was kind of like more Australian in style. And I think the fruit is a little bit dull back now. But what I love is the palate. You know, for this kind of blend, it's silky. It's mm. It's the kind of silkiness I would say you expect from like some of the 70s Napa Valley uh, Cabernet or even some of the very good um, Pinot Noir. This is like real silkiness. I mean, it's uh, it, this wine is usually a little woody, but though it's really, really nice, the wood for me mm-hmm. is dialed off. Mm-hmm. It's got so much Cabernet Franc. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of capsicum, black olive, cherry. Uh, there's a little bit of pepper. It's so funny. This is right next. This this region is right next to Villan, Hungary, which is famous for Cabernet Franc. And you said that it reminds you of that style, mm-hmm. right? Riper, denser Cabernet Franc. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what's more interesting is this wine is a little bit salty on the finish. So, this is exactly what I like. Again, it shows where it's from. It shows the variety. In this side, it shows that it's aged in the cellar. I mean, underwater because of that saltiness uh, on the finish. It's an improved when it was on out of the sea. I thought it was good wine in the 90, 91, po- 91, I think I gave it. I think I'm in the 92, 93 range with it. Um, the I would be inclined to put it as 93 because it's so damn unique. It's, really. it's so, I mean, we had one maybe. Uh, one maybe, one inconclusive, and two yeses. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really darn cool. <laughs> like wow! No, yeah. Seriously, yeah. every time we do, every time we taste it, it's fascinating. And then on 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 the flip side, it's beautiful to go there. It's beautiful to see the wines being put in their sea, bringing them up. Uh, we actually made a video. It was part of a video when we did a video series on Croatian wine. I'll put that link in the description box. That's when you'll see actually Shireen's first act- reactions when she actually really tasted the same wine aged in the sea versus not <laughs> aged in the sea. I think I have the same reaction today as well, especially with the barbage. Yeah. Any, right. Anything else that you want to add on, on, on this? The story? You think it's a good idea with the story of Croatia? I I know there are people who are quite against the, the idea of aging wine underwater because it's like it's like very Gimmicky. strong and unnatural intervention they claim or but I think I think for Croatia especially or even Italy as well it's a great story. I mean it's like come on, Croatia is surrounded by the Adriatic Sea. Sometimes tewa, the word tewa is a little bit too too much of a blanket, I feel. And if you want to talk about this whole identity and tewa thing, right? Adriatic Sea could easily be part of the tewa or Croatian wine as well. You know? And uh, Marco's experiment with Italian wines, we did try some Barbaresco, some Amarone, some Port from the sea. Uh-huh. And it was pretty darn good. I mean, uh, that's about it. it. Just, it's just important to support innovation in the wine industry. I mean... We need to move forward, we need to learn, we need to continue to grow and to try new ways of making wine. It, come on, it's getting warm, you know, Cl- climate change. Maybe it's better to just put everything underwater. I <laughs> will see. <laughs> so guys, check it out. I'll check out Coral Wines. I'll put some of the information in the box. Uh, these I think this one will be on the market. These will not be, but he has a big selection. Uh, check it out. And guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Exotic Wine Travel, we will see you in the next episode! Ah! Wow!